here. Good evening. It is uh, 7:04. <clears throat> uh, we'll call the April 1st meeting of the Master Plan Implementation Committee um, to order. First order of business: public comments. Hearing none. Oh, oh no, public. <laughs> <laughs> public. I have a comment. Uh, is it? Uh, should we? Should we wait? Should we? Oh, it was just about a new member being on ComCom. I wonder if there is any hope that oh. we can get a rep. That's a good. Mm -hmm. this committee. Yeah. Did you hear who it is? Oh, we do have one. Is that what you're saying? Brittany. Oh, fantastic. Oh, she's wonderful. She's a young person we've met a couple of times. Uh, she lives up the road from me, and she's very conservation-minded. Terrific news. Mm -hmm. yeah. She doesn't live far from Christina. So. She, she would be a good addition to this committee as well. Does it's she fun. know about it for tonight? I wonder if she did that Isn't just there happen? a Hong Kong meeting? Yes. Right yeah. now. Yeah. There's yeah. one going on right now, yeah. I was at the open space the other, whatever, a couple of nights ago, and they were kind of expecting her there, and she didn't show up. To no, a different Brittany. Oh, different. Um, yeah, this is a different one. Brittany. Yes. Oh, Brittany. Yes. yes. A different one. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, that's a different person. She okay. works at Arcadia, but that's oh. Is Brittany's last name. Do you remember? Yeah, I do. It'll come to me. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's, uh -huh. it's there. It's just hard to access. Yes. I made a note to reach out. It's great. <clears throat> Let's see. Approved minutes of March 25th meeting. A couple things. I think we did have a guest. Oh, that's true. Mm -hmm. I did this first. <laughs> I apologize. Um, he kind of came late. Jean Crevier. Thank you very much. I didn't have a chance to read them. Would you be willing to share? Have you read that? I did. Yeah. I didn't find anything. I didn't even notice. There's like an incomplete sentence I thought I saw somewhere. Mm -hmm. Probably. Anybody else see it? I'm okay with this small. I'm not quite <laughs> no, that old yet. No, 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 that's not why I did it. Oh, yeah. Um, I have more files on the side. MR will discuss this and other water-related issues with the water commissioners. There is apparently a water development a water something. department. A water department. Oh, yeah, okay, I remember that. Water department plan. Is that in, uh, that's in 6-1? Right uh, before 6 -1. Oh, yeah, I got it. Yeah. I meant to say water department master plan. There you go. Does that sound right? Mm -hmm. That we sure. said that? I think we did say that. Okay, very good. I think that's all I saw. So I was intrigued that we got a little uh, update on the cluster zone, zoning law in Chapter 8. Okay. It talks yeah. about the requirements of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So anything else on the minutes? No. Uh, mm -hmm. That was good. Oh, KM. Oh, oh, got it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. KM, not KT. Where did I get KT? Uh, Christina changed her name. That's well, Christina. <laughs> so, and that's where uh, the last word at 62D. 62D. She's got to okay. e email uh, Barry. I made a mistake and called KM, <laughs> KT. Error. Okay. That's on 6-2-D. You see that, Christine? Yeah. Okay. Anything else? No, that was good. I don't see anything else. I did read the water department line. And I, I didn't know if that was a sarcastic comment. <laughs> when I first read it, I'm like, there's apparently a water department. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. No, is that sarcasm in the this midst? I was going to leave sarcasm. it. Sarcasm. I can be sarcastic. <laughs> I just said to Ed Gibson um, earlier, um, I, I think we have just so many need for meetings in our town that we should make a 14-day work week. Yeah. And he actually paused. Yeah. I mean, he actually, oh, you're, like, you're joking. Yeah, he probably <laughs> thought about how much he could get done in those days. He said he was looking for a 48-hour day, so mm -hmm. more power to him. So he can sleep and eat, probably. <laughs> okay, so. I'm good. 
Pat, do you want to ask for it? I'll, uh, I'll accept a motion on that. Move to approve. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. All right. So approved with those minor changes for mm -hmm. corrections. Okay. Thank you. All right. Next, we have Chapter 7, Energy. So what is the energy of the room for the review? We want to do <laughs> beginning to the chapter and then work our way through. Um, yeah, I think. Okay. If we feel it's a better way, I'm perfectly open to. I think this is a short room. chapter. I mean, we've got, you know, we've got a few questions probably, but not. Yeah. It's the next one on land use. I think it's going to be a bit more heavy duty in terms of discussion. So chapter seven, energy, um, it covers a decent amount of items, um, green community, sort of municipal involvement in town energy policies and uses. So, um, you know, for conversation's sake, we are a green community, so we have done a couple of these already, a couple of the strategies, which have come up all the requirements to become a green community. So um, there are some green boxes in this, uh, in this chapter. On the first page of the chapter 137 in my book, it um, on the last uh, paragraph, last sentences of the last, uh, the last paragraph of the introduction, it refers to um, the proposal for a solar uh, photovoltaic installation on the, this roof. Hmm. Do you know if that was ever pursued? Um, I don't think so. I honestly don't think we've pursued PV installs anywhere in town. I mean, I think we pursued purchasing electricity from one that was being built locally, but I don't know if we've ventured out and putting them on any building. So is that? Well, well, please go ahead. No, please go ahead. Well, I just want to, it says the town engaged uh, um, an energy service company to complete a preliminary energy audit performance contract. I don't know. That could have been part of the, maybe the building, the rehab, like when they did the renovation of the building. Maybe they had someone look into it at that point, but I've never seen anything or heard it as a capital plan or a capital objective. Well, I wonder if the study was ever, or the proposal was ever completed, so that would be something to find out. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. <clears throat> and just off the top of my head, I'm not sure, but doesn't this, you're talking this, the new Well, yeah, home, right? I think so. Doesn't this building still have slate on it? Uh, and if it has slate on it, you're not going to put PV on it. Might be, is it metal on them? Is it slate the whole way around? Slate. I don't, I don't think that. that the wing would be slate. Maybe this original building is, but that's something to look at. But the, why would it have been suggested as a proposal? Right. Uh, didn't I hear, I was at the Finance Committee meeting just prior to this, hanging out, listening to a few things. I thought I heard a reference when John Workman was here, when he was talking, he's the fire chief, um, talking about the fire building, fire department building, which is not even meeting OSHA standards right now. Something about uh, putting a, 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 a field, um, solar field behind the building. So Ed had mentioned that. Actually, I would asked him some questions about this chapter about a week or so ago, and Ed did mention that, that okay. that was something they had talked about. I don't know if they've done any preliminary studies or anything like that, okay. but he did say that, but it wasn't uh, for moving forward. I think it was more conversational between the departments at that point. But Making some use of uh, the, land, the otherwise the unused ledge. But I think that, so that plan <clears throat> of maybe utilizing that property hinges on what happens with this property, what happens with that property. Is a, does a building go up? Do they make more parking up there? Just kind of a, um, yeah, because he had kind of elaborated that it was, it's an idea, but it's, it's an idea surrounded by other things that will dictate whether or not the idea can happen. So, um, they're in the building. That's an easterly exposure, I think, down, coming down that slope. 
Right. Yeah. right. Is, aren't good. these usually so oriented north south? That's southern how Google southern southern usually. Is better. Yeah. So this is north. North is up. Oh, good. Right. So this is the, <laughs> I guess, the south side of the right. The roof your southern exposure. You got some you just have to turn deciduous. <laughs> I don't know how much they would. <clears throat> that. that doesn't look like slate I mean, to me. That looks yeah. like asphalt. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. I mean, we'd have to. Yeah, because we'd <laughs> have to right, we compare it to the congregational church. That's clearly that's definitely slate. Yeah. It's, it's got an older look to it. Um, you see the discoloration there. You can also see the rights of the copper on the the peak. Right. Versus here, it's. <laughs> oh, that looks geez. like three tab to me. Some kind of weird that. Could be. So. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 something, right? The town could entertain. I. I don't know. It'd be a tough sell for me because these trees here would be impacting. It. Well, I was right. more curious as to to the fact that it says that the. Um, we had engaged, the town had engaged mm. this company to uh, write a proposal to cite a support photovoltaic. Right. It's just another one of those things that mm -hmm. was worked on in the past and it did it get followed up or is yeah, it don't know the what the outcome of it was. Mm -hmm. yeah. Whether it was just uh, whether it just slid <clears throat> or whether it was determined that it wasn't going to move forward. So is there, who would be the reasonable person to ask? There's no longer an energy committee, right? We talked about it. And Ed was not here in 2010, so. Uh, I mean, John Martin may know. I'm just trying to think of who on the board may know. You know, he was involved, I think, in the finance committee then, so he may, uh -huh. he may kind of be relatively aware of what was going on. Um, I, I wrote it down Possibly as a question. Charlie that know, he yeah, Charlie. Part of the, um, um, what are they called? The committee that's to build the um, the new safe, 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 safety safety complex. complex. Yeah, that's it. Son Charlie. Yeah, I'm sure right. Right. Yeah. It kind of tied into that just right below that because the energy committee doesn't exist anymore, and that was all part of this regional county mm -hmm. plan. I mean, does that mean we're no longer part of this regional plan from PV <laughs> PVC, mm -hmm. PVPC or what? I mean. If we don't have a an energy committee and we're part of a plan that a regional plan for Hamden and Hampshire and Franklin counties, mm -hmm. back then in 2009. So I think, we, I mean, if you were to go to the PVC PVPC yeah, I, website, there are there are a lot of yeah. regional mm -hmm. projects they do, and any town has the ability to opt in. Mm -hmm. So it's not. Having an energy committee, right, would be great for those energy specific mm -hmm. things, but PVPC reaches out and kind of makes their services known to the town. So we could we could opt into anything as long mm -hmm. as you know you pay your dues mm -hmm. um, literally for the, the group. So you no, know, I don't think we'd be missing out if we don't have an energy committee. It just makes it tough to be specific mm -hmm. with energy related subcommittees that they may be creating. Okay. Yeah, I didn't have a chance to look at their website to see any of these reports to see what's there. It says here on the list of uh, the original master plan that the energy committee rep was Chuck Konecki, but Kurt Beaujolais was on it for a while too. Okay. His term expired in 2017 and the energy <coughs> committee disbanded in 2014. Oh. Kurt's Expired in 2017. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the three seats were open, according to the town in Southampton website. He was the only one on it. Mm -hmm. say what's the best. <laughs> <laughs> newly newly re-elected, and then it just kind of fell apart. Yeah. Hmm. The four goals um, in the PVPC Clean Energy Plan <coughs> um, for Western Mass Reduce energy consumption by 15% by 2020. Mm -hmm. Replace energy used from non-renewable fossil fuels with clean energy. Reduce greenhouse gas emissions and create local jobs in the clean energy sector. Mm -hmm. When's that from? Where's that from? The website? Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. also right. It's I was going to say they had the, the same goal in 2010. The same goal. Yeah. It's under boards and commissions yeah. for government. So how much well, is the first one? Pretty energy. hard to measure. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. 
there are a lot of efforts in town to change light bulbs and to do some energy conservation. I know the library is thinking of that. I think the schools are in this building as well. Yeah. So. I mean, Mass Save does, they have great programs. Right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, they offer, depending on what you do, there's different financing options, but even as a homeowner, like I, they, I know we did it, yeah. they come in and they'll change out every one of your light bulbs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And do this thing where they scan around windows to see what kind of heat's mm -hmm. seeping through. They do a lot. I mean, you do pay for it in every right. utility bill. Right. So, you, you know, residents should take home. advantage of it. Yeah. You know, they'll do I assessments. Keep myself that. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. It started in February of 09, by the way. Just on that. The committee? Mm -hmm. okay. So it lasted kind of five years. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Yeah. Carrying on with that, it says in the future the town may follow up with an investment grade audit for yeah, more in-depth assessment. I wonder if that happens. That's my question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Take place. This is kind of a dumb question because I don't know the answer to it. Um, way back when, when the committee was in force, so say in 2013 or whenever they might have had a meeting, are there ways to find their old minutes somewhere still? They should be posted. Are they posted? If still? they were they posted. Are. Okay. Yeah, okay. some are. I get notices every time I log, <coughs> I log in about, about the ones that weren't posted. Mm. Um, which Because a lot of these say that they're not posted somewhere. Yeah. I think, right. Yep, so that's true. Where does one find them? <laughs> For history's so sake. We, we lost to history, unfortunately. You know, just to figure out what might have been discussed or what, you know. I think Megan's trying to find What conclusions it. happened at that time about yeah. these audits? For, with the Master Plan mm -hmm. Committee or the Energy no, Committee? No, the Energy Committee. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Are there. Um, Minutes for the master plan meetings. Just looking to see when they went to the old ones, mm -hmm. the original master plan development. Um, the master plan implementation. There's a whole oh, series right. that are not there. Okay. But do you know? I can't remember who uh, was the clerk at the master plan. So it looks like they're summoned to 2017. These are going to energy now or master plan? Master plan. Hmm. Yeah, but then there's like a, a bunch that are not posted, correct? Right. Because like Mike, I keep seeing that they're not posted. Old ones, they keep popping up. Yeah. Are you seeing any? They, they did not meet in 2012 according to this, <laughs> or 2011. <laughs> So they didn't <laughs> utilize the posting uh, <laughs> opportunities. Is that master plan? No, for the okay. energy. <laughs> the only people who met were personnel, policy, and procedure boards. So I don't even know if this was like a thing. Oh, ConCon. Con. Okay. So they may be on file with the um, the town clerk yeah. as well. I mean, you had the opportunity to file your minutes with there. Mm -hmm. So I think committees still do that. They file their minutes there. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it is a place to look. Do we do that? They're, ours are automatically posted, and mm -hmm. therefore they're available through the town clerk's office that way. Okay. Yep. I shouldn't say automatically posted. <laughs> I am automatically posting them. <laughs> Have you looked? Have you tried to find them? No, I just haven't. For, no. Just for info's sake? No, I, I'd like to. Yeah, just to get uh, just after we. Yeah. After we um, ratify minutes, mm -hmm. um, I go home and clean them up a little teeny bit and then mm -hmm. put them on. Okay. And you have to have an access code to do it. Okay. And you get that through the town clerk's office. Yeah. You could look without an access code, but to do an edit or to post a, right. um, an agenda. Okay. So I just like absolutely out of the blue randomly went to the old master plan uh -huh. meetings and just randomly clicked on one and this happens to be one from November 17th, couldn't even tell you what year, 2012. 
and Kurt Beaujolais was there representing the energy committee <laughs> as, <All right>. a, <laughs> cool. as an extra person. <laughs> and it says that he presented the current status of the investment grade audit being done. Well, but he didn't give it what it was. But so that was <laughs> November of 2012, you said? Yes. 11, November 17th. 11, yeah. 17, 12. The well, was approved in 2012, so probably 2011. Oh, that's cool. So the EC is focused at this time more on tactical issues rather than strategies. This means, for example, working on the possibility of Southampton seeking green status is on hold. Among it's amazing things. we waited that long. Right. The green community designation. Uh, what year did we get that? Last year. I worked for a town. Ten years ago, we got it. What would be the reason for that? Why is such a delay? The same reason for the bike path. I don't know, right? I mean, <laughs> it's. I mean, there's there's work to be done to get it, but the work really isn't that difficult. So I mean, there's what's that even actually? the bylaw is probably the hardest, the, right? The yeah, off of our the um, hey, uh, uh, our website. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, Renewable energy bylaw, or maybe it's just solar related. The bylaw. Would that have been Ed's initiative to push that through? Well, I think Bob had done a lot of the initial work for that, and we actually received designation. I think Bob had left, but Ed was yeah. Bob had left. Ed was here. We received it during Ed's time. But it's just it's one of those things. We, you know, we missed out on hundreds of thousands of dollars or state grant money for projects in town because we, I don't know, we didn't do that. Maybe because the energy committee disbanded or, you know, not really sure, but it's one of those things that could have been easily pursued. So Mike, the person, the town you're aware of that did it 10 years ago, mm -hmm. was it a town with a larger professional staff? And, and, and our town is such a new professional staff were, were all volunteers. Is that part of it or I mean, I, no correlation? I worked on it when I worked for the town. So I was... Which town, this town? It was, well, it was the city of North Adams, but oh. I had worked on it and I mean, I was mid 20, so sort of professional at the time. No, professional is the wrong word, hired, or you know, I meant to say, you know, the... Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of it, they offered consulting services, like these, the regional groups offered help. I think we had help from maybe the Berkshire, I mean, Berkshire County Planning Commission, I can't remember the, yeah. the exact group, but they offered workshops and helps and yeah. templates and everything you needed, so a lot of it was it's sort of plug and play. Yeah. So the reason I raise that is um, it just feels to me like a lot of things we get, we miss mm -hmm. because of lack of continuity, mm -hmm. because volunteers maybe have high energy but not the right skills, um, or political agenda switch and a priority switch, you know, mm -hmm. one year we're all up in arms about schools and another time it's energy and another time it's, you know, conservation and, you know, I just, it concerns me that we don't have, like Francine often says, you know, we don't have any kind of centralized and Right. Well, it's kind of a dedicated, to me it would be like a dedicated follow-up person. I mean, you can discuss all these things and have all the great ideas, but then, okay, after it's all over, yeah. who's the person, who's the point person to right. really dog this and Yeah, and, and, and is it the select board which changes and gets overwhelmed by all kinds of stuff that comes before mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. It's, it is, it's difficult, I mean, because then you're, you, know, you talk about the three, you know, topics of discussion that changed over the last three years, they're all run by three different committees or three different groups that don't yeah. report up to the same chain. So it does, it makes it tough, I think, to get traction on certain things because you get traction and then there's an election and the members change or something like that. But um, we, we have the designation now, you know, we've made some steps. We, I think we received funds last year for, um, some work at the school, some work in this building. Um, I don't know if other buildings were involved, but it was 180,000, 100, somewhere around there we received money. Um, so it helps. 
But you could have had it years ago too, right? So. Mm -hmm. so I was just at the finance committee meeting, and this is apropos to this discussion, and um, the chairperson of the um, school committee came to present draft budget and pointed out that by missing on a certain aspect of what the schools could have done, we're now having to go to out of our system in order to meet some needs of students that have special needs, and it's going to cost a lot more for our town. And it's only a few students because, you know, I mean, anybody who's a parent or a grandparent wants everything for their students, and we also want them for our community. But by sort of chasing and not getting the traction, Right. And not, in, you know, not being a little proactive on that aspect, we've lost. We're going to lose more. We're in a tight budget situation now. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so box time off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Jumping over a couple pages, this uh, grade of F in terms of air quality. Do we know if that's ever improved any or for the county, let alone? <laughs> Well, that's what I was talking about last, last few years. Oh, we are D now? Okay, I missed The county that. is still the third worst in the state. That's amazing. Which part is that? Uh, 140. 138 for me, oh, but oh, depending yes. on. Oh, it's 140. So oh, okay. right before 7.13. Okay. Yeah, I'm right above there. So right above there. Okay. So no counties in Massachusetts have an app right now. But so a D, huh? We have a D. Okay. And if you go by the numbers, mm -hmm. that's what a third worst in the state. Hmm. Talks about the electricity price. Energy breakdown consumption on 139. Mm -hmm. Just interesting. So much of it is at the school. Mm -hmm. Some of these other surprise how little energy they use, and you can spend you know, hours in those weeds, but really the effort should be focused on the school, and that's where you. And it's a lot of equipment, right? A lot of air handling equipment, a lot of, a lot of lights. Um, I mean, I think this data is from 2011 as yeah. well. So there has been work done. There's been a new roof. There's been, like I said, whatever funds they received last year. There's been lighting upgrades. Same thing with a lot of these, a lot of these on here, right? Town Hall has, I think, had some things done. The library's had some heating, cooling work done, which should hopefully help. Will, will help, right? Because the efficiency of the unit's higher. Um, so they have or haven't changed light bulbs in the school? They're about to. That's what they're I bet you that would make such a difference. I don't mean that sarcastically. <laughs> I mean, that's that's what what it like. Oh, it did. Yeah. yeah I mean, uh, that was at a select board meeting a couple of meetings ago. They were talking about changing the light bulb. To, and it was going to cost a lot of money to make all the changes. Sure. But eventually, that would be more efficient. I'm pretty sure I heard that at a select board yeah. meeting. What is it? Go ahead. I was just going to say one of the goals was for the street lights. Is that done? No. All those street okay. lights we have? Yeah, right. <laughs> so the, <laughs> we used to have <laughs> the cost. So there's a cost to purchase the street lights for the town because they're owned by the electric company. Um, the electric company does not actively change out lights to LEDs. Um, it's actually something we just started think they're available now to be put in for new installs and like new developments and things, but it's not something that was offered last year, for instance. Um, some towns like East Hampton have purchased all their street lights and then they've gone through a retrofitting program and put in LEDs and done different things. But Isn't there an issue with the type of light uh, <clears throat> from L the issued by LLD LEDs and um, avian life? I don't know. It's definitely brighter, right? If you drive by or drive up what's a Southampton Road going up towards Holyoke, <laughs> if you drive from like Southampton into that street, the lights are different, right? So that's a that orange one out there is a mercury vapor. It's mm -hmm. orange. It looks Well, I was going to say like it's bluer. There's something right. about the light that mm -hmm. is 
problematic. With yeah, so mercury vapors are kind of an orangish yellow color, high pressure sodiums are a little whiter, and then the LEDs have that sort of blue tone to them. It, I'm assuming it affects things, right? Think about all the the bug zappers or all the light bulbs you have you put outside, they all attract something. Um, you talk about the migratory patterns? Sometimes well, I, don't, I can't remember, but I just, rem mm. I have this big recollection that I read something about they're, um, they're posing a problem <clears throat> of some sort. Mm -hmm. There's actually, I read a, a thing about how um, um, the trade towers, the, you know, that there was now lights uh, in New York City and they're doing one day a year to count the number of migratory birds that go through those lights. It's, it's just phenomenal. I, I mean, that's not Southampton, but it has affected um, mm. the changes of birds. Well, I mean, you think about it, it's, it's like if you have a bat in your fireplace, for instance, right, the worst thing you can do is open your clean out. Because it's going to go towards whatever like little light is there, right? Because that's how they they leave your chimney. Because the moon comes out, and they know that's the way to go. Because they woke up. You open that at, like later in the day, they're going to come down into your house because all they're going to do is spin around. They don't know which ways you know they may be oriented. So um, yeah, I mean lights attract birds, animals. So. Sure. Is good, but um, I've never seen any like studies or anything on them. But I'm sure they're out there. Um, but those are all costs. Um, you know, like if you wanted to purchase all of your own street lights from the utility company, and I, I've had this conversation with Ed because he did, you know, talk to our company about it. I said it's fine if the town wants to do that until you have to change a light bulb because you don't have the equipment nor the supply house, nor the contractor to do it, and you pay a fee today to, to rent that light, right? But we change it for free. The guy you call in is not gonna change it for free, and that's, that's where some towns, if you have, if you're of a certain size, it's easy enough for you to manage, you can have a wire and light division that does street lights, mm -hmm. and, you know, fire alarms and that type of stuff, but it's a little different here. Are you talking about LED lights specifically? Just, just lights in general. Just lights in general. Right. Okay. Do they look at, in addition to the, you know, you're talking about back to the school, in addition to just changing the light, light which makes sense, but when the building is old, like 56, you know, they look at the windows, and mm. air flowing even. Readily through, it's expensive to replace windows, but it's expensive to keep throwing money. Yeah. Look at that, 65 percent. Yeah. They do caulking and weather sealing, sort of part of those audits on the commercial oh, buildings. I don't know if that one's been fully audited, if, if they've done some of the work, but they look at putting variable frequency drives on some of the pumps and things so they're not running, um, you know, full on, full off. but. I don't know specifically what's going to happen. I would think that the kitchen would have a significant energy draw. Right. Mm -hmm. All those hoods running mm -hmm. all the time. Stoves and... I don't know how At much... 36,000 therms, I'm assuming they're gas stoves. <laughs> that's, a lot of, yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of gas being used. Code, page 141? Yes, we did. That's a requirement of the Green Communities Act. Um, can we go back a bit to um, the municipal vehicles? Mm -hmm. um, I believe I, I'm learning that the Capital Expenditure Committee is talking about buying a new municipal truck, whether that will help with. Pick up, don't. $250,000 truck. That's a dump, pick truck. It. dump truck. <laughs> yeah. So dump trucks are exempt from the, so part of the Green Communities Act, you have to adopt a fuel efficient municipal vehicle policy, okay. but heavy equipment is exempt um, oh. because they don't make fuel efficient tri-axle dump trucks. Mm -hmm. 
Does that seem terribly high for the cost of a truck, or is it just no. me? I've never uh, bought a dump <laughs> truck. <laughs> you keep going up. I'll tell them to get higher than that. Gosh. Holy cow. Okay. But they're exempt, huh? Yeah. Same thing with, like, um, like public safety equipment, right? Police, fire, EMS. Um, you know, you, you sort of get some of that when you... Well, actually, no, I wouldn't say with the police department because there are different motors in there than the, the regular Explorer. But, you know, with some of the highway vehicles, you may if you were to purchase a new vehicle. But there are some of the, the sort of the man vehicle, the truck, the non-F250 or Super Duty vehicles. Do we know whether the stretch code is enforced here? Um, Maybe part of the building permit? Yes. I would say it is. I mean, I what, so I pulled a permit to renovate a small sunroom off the side of our home, and we talked about, like, old insulation requirements versus new requirements versus stretch code requirements. So it's, from a personal experience, I could say that it's something that comes up in conversation. We ended up doing spray foam insulation in the room because it just made sense. The walls were two by four, so you get the most R value by doing the spray foam insulation, so. So the building inspector was in on that, insisting that you meet the new standards? Yep. Yeah, and that was the, the sort of the stretch of the, the middle of the roadway, was if you use spray foam, you meet all the standards, you don't have to build out the walls, and so. Oh, okay, that's good. another reference to solar panels at the dump. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's never happened, right? No. Mm -mm. I don't know if that one's like topographically that feasible. Did you have a tree line like right at the top of the hill? Mm -hmm. Right. So if you put the panels, the hill goes this way, the trees are here, and this right. is south, right? Right. That's the so problem. if all the panels are on the hill, the hill's sloping the wrong kind way. Kind of facing the wrong direction. Yeah. Is right. it indeed? Is that the topography that it's facing it's north? north? Yeah, I'm pretty sure right. that, yes. that slope faces north. Yeah. Indeed. So yes. do you, I mean, do you clear cut all the trees on top of the hill and put the solar panels there? No, right? Even Nobody's if you did, the topography might not make a yeah. difference. The trees might not. But that is happening, that forests are being cut to put up solar fields. It's so happening it here in town, isn't it? So I understand. Yes. Uh, yeah, I think they came before the planning board something about doing a whole solar field. I can't remember where. Um, I think that's in process someplace. Does anybody know where that is? Well, it, it's um, uh, in the library thing. Okay. Uh, Apparently. On Valley Road? I don't hear. I don't, I I don't know where. Okay. That's where, but it, it's of the elder generation, so I would imagine it is at Valley Road. Okay. And that's going to be commercial and private, not for the town, right? I believe so. I can't get but I believe that a forest is being cut to install it. Okay. Aren't there possibilities of having the solar mounted though on a rotating basis so you can you can follow the sun literally? I've seen some of those in people's hmm. you know, houses, but is that not practical for a large for an array? I don't know. Yeah. 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 It's, it's more it's more for like your like the single home. Yeah. Yeah. You see them a lot in like the the higher elevation hill towns. Mm -hmm. Like if you're up in um decent amount of, like Ashfield has them. If you drive around like just mm -hmm. on top of the mountain, there's a decent mm -hmm. amount of the houses that have the ones that turn, but mm -hmm. they're they're probably just sized for a you know single story mm -hmm. ranch with a finished basement or something. Um, I've seen them on those. They do have foundations to them as well, so it, mm -hmm. you can't really like w going back to the landfill. You can't you can't um, puncture the cap. Oh, that's up right. there. So anything has to be ground mounted. Yeah. So they use pans with um, either concrete or CMG blocks in there. So. so when 143 comes back to the school again, 
from leading opportunities to save energy is upgrading the public school facilities. Mm -hmm. so. I made a note to reach out about their, like sort of a more mm -hmm. robust audit. Have they done this? Have things been done? Um, and I did speak to Ed about tracking down the utility usage. Um, so the <clears throat> Part of the Green Communities Act is to collect data and monitor your your utility usage um, from a KW BTU perspective. That's never really been looked at, and it's being done by a group at UMass. So it's it's on his list to to follow up with, so we can actually see what's been done because they've been imported data. I think it's. They have to for it's five or ten years. So you'd be able to see over the last five years, and maybe it's ten, ten would be great, but over the last ten years what the town buildings have done for usage. Mm, that'd be good to know. Mm. And further down there it says, you know, it says the opportunities for renewable energy production in Southampton, especially solar, will be evaluated and pursued. Mm -hmm. Right. Have they been? Yeah. <laughs> there, is, there is a town bylaw about solar panels for private homes. That's hmm. that's been done. I don't know if it was but done that's this not, time. That's to for locating them, is it not? So to be yes. a certain distance from mm -hmm. the property line and so forth. Yes, and also aesthetically is acceptable. Um, in some cases, people have put them in and then been told they have to, you know, have certain trees not to block the sun, but to mm -hmm. block the view from the road in order to make it more better. Right. So that doesn't have to do with encouraging the um, adoption of solar energy. In town. I, don't, I don't think so. No. I mean, anything, anything that goes on the roof of your home is by right. So you have the ability to put that on. You have to go through a. You know, the electrical inspector, right, because there'll be a meter upgrade, disconnect switches, different things put on your home for the system itself, but that's all by right. So yeah, this is, I'm talking free free standing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like mine. <laughs> Mine's out in the middle of a field. <laughs> Did you talk about joining solarized mass? I don't know much about the program, but I know a lot of communities in the state have joined it where it sort of, it encourages and helps residents to put solar on their homes. Um, I don't know if we pursued it. I know we haven't, we're not part of that, so I don't know if we've actively pursued that. But. <clears throat> Are we able to, or is it worthwhile to try to tie into the, the new facility that's been built on the, on the Westfield line down there? Gone, uh, oh, that whole array that field. huge field down yeah. there, yeah. Across so, the old digital. Yeah. Is that anything that we so you don't, can tie into? So you don't tie into them. You buy, well, this is Westfield. It's probably a little different. Um, but you buy credits for the electricity okay. um, because it is theoretically one giant grid. Mm -hmm. right? So that electricity is the same as ours. It's the same as everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, they're a little different because they're a municipality. I don't think we ever pursued that. Like we've done other um, energy credit purchases. There's a system that was built in Deerfield that we're supposed to buy energy from at a allegedly reduced rate. Um, there was a like a methane cogen plant going up in Granville, I think, that we were supposed to buy. Um, electricity from when it becomes operational. I think a couple of those were, they're PVPC encouraged. Mm -hmm. um, so they come here, they have a plant, you know, generating site going up somewhere. They look for municipalities to buy into that at a reduced rate, mm -hmm. um, so. You don't know if we have done that though? I, so I know we committed to, I just don't know what we've, actually started receiving the benefit of. Like I know the plant mm -hmm. in Granville isn't built yet, so mm -hmm. we haven't received mm -hmm. anything there. Mm -hmm. Well, this one on the Westfield line is new. I'm relatively right. new too, so maybe. A lot of times those, like the, the buyers of that electricity get, they get, they come on really quickly, mm -hmm. right? So if it, if it was built in Westfield, the first thing they're gonna do is reach out to the 
Detroit City, the school systems, mm -hmm. the industrial complex right across right. the street, right? Because if they can get people up locally, then it becomes a great local project. Sure. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that was ever brought before um, the town. I don't remember that one specifically being brought before. And some of them, the electricity isn't for sale, mm -hmm. right? It's built for private purposes. It's built for mandated purposes. So like where I work, we own a large, we own stakes or completely own a large number of facilities because we're government mandated to produce a certain amount of mm. renewable electricity. Um, so some of those, we build them, we feed them into the grid, we're net metered with a regulatory agency and we don't necessarily um, sell it to the consumer, consumer directly. Because gotcha. we're meeting a larger demand um, so like the, all of the electricity in the Massachusetts grid is managed by a place called ISO New England. So they manage sort of the power consumption in the region. Mm. So they keep in, they take into consideration what we would generate at some of those like utility owned sites in the, the, the grand scheme of things. Mm. So it doesn't necessarily mean it goes to a local school system. Mm. No, the reason I bring it up is somebody, and I can't remember who or when or where they <coughs> were, but somebody in town was telling me that they'd been approached by a salesman, some some somebody that came by, that talking about you know trying to get these energy credits by. Mm -hmm. I use the word loosely tying in, but you know to to um, do whatever it takes to deal with the, this one right on the border there. Yeah. So there's been some outreach from people that are managing that somehow to some residents yeah. in town, I gather, I don't know. Yeah, you gotta be careful with that. Because so. So, well, sometimes those are the same people that call you from Florida and want to sell you reduced electricity. <laughs> yeah. They can go door to door and do it, right? And yeah, say, I'm that's gonna true. Sell you <laughs> that electricity at a reduced rate, and then yeah. in three months your rate doubles what you would pay yeah. at the mm -hmm. utility. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway. You're a font of knowledge, Mike. My um, my family does. Well, my my in-laws, my wife's mother has a. Uh, we lease property to a to a solar developer in national grid territory. So I also know a little bit just from that sort of owner standpoint. Um, Works for us. Actually, we did it. So, on a personal level, I don't necessarily love these sites that go in all over the place in the field. Like where we did it, it's in an old junkyard that was converted to a gravel pit that's now sort of a defunct construction site. Mm -hmm. And you can't see it from any road. You got to drive up two different roads to see it. It's a great sighting for something like that, mm -hmm. right? It's a couple, maybe it's four acres. Um, that's right next to a transmission distribution line, so there's nothing pretty anywhere when you're there, but mm -hmm. you know it works out well. Um, and that, I think they sell some of their electricity. It's in that's in Clarksburg, which is right on the Vermont border, and they sell a lot of that electricity down to like South County, Southern Berkshire County school systems. A couple of them buy a lot of it. So. <coughs> So I did run through the energy strategy list. I checked off a lot of the ones we've completed. Some are just pending action. Um, and a lot of it I've sent to Bob about following up with um, so like 1A, 1B, those are done. 1C, monitor and evaluate progress and, and savings. So that is, the data is being collected. We just haven't necessarily seen the data and the report out function. Who's Bob? I'm sorry, Ed. Oh, okay. Bob started it, Ed okay. took the credit because he was here when it was designated. Okay. Um, yeah, I have a question of status and all of these. Does it make sense just to go through if you know? Yeah, if you don't mind. Sure, so 7-1D, promote federal, state, and utility-based energy efficiency incentives such as the mass save program and tax credits. After speaking with Bob, we agreed to mark this one as complete because 
Mass Save advertises with everyone. Ed. Ed. Man. <laughs> 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 but we know what you were talking about this time. Um, so please continue, sir. So we marked this one as complete just because the, your utility companies do this for you already. Mm -hmm. and it's not an effort worth doing twice from the town standpoint, to be honest. That's um, Provide local incentives for energy efficiency and or renewable energy, such as rebates, tax credits, free electric vehicle charging at municipal buildings and similar efforts. Mm. <laughs> this is a middle to long run, long term goal, in my opinion. I mean, I think providing those incentives is a good, it's a good reach, but. Well, nothing who's gonna fund place, those reasons? No, nothing's in place specifically funding, right? And those EV stations are not, they're not inexpensive to build. That's like the previous one, the utility company wants to provide that. Yeah. Yeah. You know. yeah. Exactly. And it's kind of the same thing. For, so you get the rebate on your fridge from the utility company. And this to me sounds like now you want a rebate on your fridge from the town. I mean, you, you theoretically pay for the rebate for your fridge every every time you get a bill, right? There's a renewable energy mm -hmm. portion. If you think you're going to get a rebate from the town for free, you're kind of fooling yourself, right? They're going to charge you a fee or a tax to give that rebate out to someone else. So why not keep your own money? So, so let me ask a question about these uh, energy vehicle, uh, electric vehicle charging stations. Uh, how does that work? Is it possible? If the town could invest in it, that they could make money on it? Do you see what I'm saying? I don't know how mm -hmm. they work. I don't have an energy, if I don't have an electric vehicle, but. So it depends on the charger. So if you were to use like a Tesla charger, um, and this gets a little technical, but they, they size the transformer that feeds it based on like the maximum load the charger could ever take, which means it's, it ends up being a very big pad mount transformer that feeds these, which is expensive. Um, you know, some of the smaller ones, you can probably get away with um, the town putting it in and it not being a big deal um, in terms of like the size of the equipment needed. But I don't, I don't know if the town has you know fifty thousand dollars to install this. Maybe there's <laughs> grant funding, right? I mean, there could be, but yeah. then it falls on who pursues that funding, and then it falls on Ed. I also don't okay. understand how it's. People, like you go, like in Northampton, you go down Grass Avenue, the bottom of the hill on the right, yeah. there's some, some stations you can plug in. Yep. Yeah. If I have an electric vehicle and I go down there and I plug in, my car is being fueled. Who's paying yeah, for that's that? I always wonder, do you run a credit card when you uh, do I don't that? know how that works. I because I thought about parking in those and just... What are you doing? <laughs> Faking it, huh? Yeah. Well, there are some it's companies. It's the one across from too. provisions, right? Yeah. 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 There, there are some stop companies that have huge right? industrial, the, mm -hmm. and like big industrial parks that have huge parking lots that have, you know, eight spots, mm -hmm. you know, eight chargers. Mm -hmm. Like, what, you just charge for free? Like, well, that's so what I'm going to charge my car. It's hard, hard to imagine, imagine that if I get electric vehicle, great, I can just pull in here and charge up for free. Right. It doesn't mm -hmm. seem. <laughs> But maybe just using programs or that's especially the earlier technology, you know, you didn't have many miles on your charge, so you needed a charge maybe to get home with. Right? <laughs> but this is so old, that's what I'm wondering. You know, mm, right. Battery power you know, life has improved a lot, but maybe they were thinking just in terms of promoting electric vehicle use, you need some more local charging stations. So people can actually mm. use their vehicles, and now it's maybe not so relevant. Because well, I think that's with a Tesla, what do you got? 250, 300 miles or something. Not Probably. everyone's got one of those, but so those chargers are going up, right? They just built one with the new Pride Station in Hadley. I think it's a Pride Station they just yeah. built on Route Nine. There's yeah. like yeah. there's a bank of five Tesla chargers in the back, four of them. And I actually see. I drive that road a decent amount for work, and I see. Cars randomly there a couple times, and my ignorance was it, is yeah, is there any standardization? Just Teslas, or can I pull up with my Chevy Volt and plug into the same? See, I don't know if the Tesla charger accepts other cars. Cause I've never seen. I don't think I've seen any park there that isn't a Tesla. But I, I don't know. I could be wrong. I don't. I don't see them. You know, cars parked there all the time. I 
mean, I wonder, you must have to, like, swipe your car to, like, fill up with gas, right? You would just then figure out. Electricity. It's hard to imagine someone's mm -hmm. giving away something for free. Mm -hmm. Actually, the Chevy Bolt on here, it gives a little backstory on the mileage and stuff, but to cost to fill up a Tesla battery, which it's under the Chevy Bolt, so I'm assuming it runs on the same, it's a, same, like a same one, the bolt, I'm um, sorry, no. ranges just over $6 in Washington State to $20 in Hawaii. So you do pay for it. Mm -hmm. You must have to run a credit card at Crest Island. <laughs> so I guess is there demand? Did you put in some at the big Y, for example, so right. mm -hmm. that's where you go shop and you plug in. Plug in. Right. So is the one on Crafts Avenue, like, as far as you know, a city-owned station, or we don't know? Sure seems, because it's every every parking spot in North Ham is city-owned. Um, oh, okay. Unless they, had, they made some kind of an agreement yeah. with whoever installed the charger and maintains it. Because, you know, remember the time when there used to be phone booths? I mean, we don't have those right. anymore, but <laughs> some people may have heard of them. But anyway, uh, phone companies used to put those in there in order for people to make phone calls right, right. on nickel or quarter or whatever right. it was. They and it them. must not be a, a, a possibility for a profit. Otherwise, the energy company would install them. And it's, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. if, it was, if it was a way to make money, for your Chevy Volt, you you would think the energy company would put them in a, in order to uh, make a few. Well, it's a good on. question. You know, is, is there a difference between a municipal charging station like in Crafts Avenue versus yeah. what you're seeing at the Pride Station in Hadley, which probably someone is making money? Yeah, we well, don't make money on the the cost of the electricity. Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking so margins is not worth it for, not worth it. for the electric company to throw. It's just, throw them up and so a municipality is just doing it as a service, if anything, for the Chevy Volts. Seemingly. Because they're probably not making a ton of money either. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah probably. Yeah. But I still, so you know, whether it's free or not to charge it, I don't know. So it it's does. probably not a big money maker. It does cost you money, but yeah. not a lot of money. Yeah. Like, yeah. I just saw you could charge a Chevy Volt for like 250 Yeah. Or ten dollars an hour on fast charge. Yeah, there, there's, 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 there's level one, level two, and level three, which is DC fast chargers, and level one is just like the hundred twenty volt AC like wall outlet. Hmm. Um, I know a, my coworker has two Priuses. And I presume that's what you must have in your house. What? Like what you would put in yeah. your house is like mm -hmm. the regular AC. Right, mm -hmm. and that's like because I was asking about it, and he says no, you just plug it in and charge it. And then there's also ones that charge when you're like stopped and you have your foot on the brake, so it charges like while you're mm -hmm. stopped, which is pretty cool. <clears throat> and then the car stops, and then it starts up again when you take your foot off the brake. Have you ever been in one of those cars? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like oh, right. it's not running, and then. The light changes and you go, mm -hmm. and it, you hear the car go back on again. It's very fascinating. Yeah. yeah. Right, but those are all hybrids, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Do you charge hybrids? You just put gas in them, and you use a lot less gas, and yeah. they charge through the engine. Well, you, a lot of hybrids you can you charge, and it uses all electricity until you get to the point of like needing gas. I see. But that's why their you know, so there isn't mileage charging. range is like 900 miles because it's <laughs> you're like, well, that's not totally true. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, I could say from a you know from a utility perspective, if it was a sort of a lucrative thing to do, we more utilities would probably do. That's right. what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? If it was, it was lucrative, you'd see them. And I, at 240 a charge at the cost of the equipment, that's a that's a long time for payback. But um, this could all change in the next decade. Mm -hmm. the well, that's uh, yeah. I think if 15 years from now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, vastly more people have electric Correct. cars, they probably start popping up. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right sure. now, the industry hasn't caught up, and the the laws haven't caught up with us. But we're moving in that direction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 10, 15 years, you see almost everybody electric. Even your so. 150s, 250s will be electric. 20 years from now, your parking meter is going to be a parking meter station. 15 years. That's right. Yeah. It's a little big. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So, so other strategies and then 7-1-F and... Yes, yeah, we 7-1-F we talked about. Um, so that's, yeah. a, that's a negative, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I know the cost was given to the town. I don't know if they've done anything with it, but I mean, the first step would be to buy the street lights. Um, Adopt a PV installation bylaw that's been done. Adopt a wind energy bylaw um, has not been done to my knowledge. I don't think so. PV installation on landfill. I put, is it feasible? Mm. Same thing with the methane capture from landfill. Is it feasible? And same thing with the tie and carmody hydropower. Hydropower is expensive to build yes. today. Like to build something, to build some sort of water related hydro generation facility today is very expensive. You need to be moving a lot of water. Yeah. So, um, and it's not. And you're not getting it out of the tie and No. Well, also, I don't think um, Holyoke has any interest in uh, working with Southampton. If it was going to generate hydropower, they would generate it. Right, if exactly. it was worth it, they would be taking it themselves. Yeah, yeah. 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 We certainly don't have access to that mm -hmm. reservoir, so that seems uh, implausible to me. And there has been men other mention in this plan about trying to negotiate uh, with Holyoke on access to it. And even at the time that it was written into here, it was completely out of, out of question. Yeah. Um, purchase renewable energy for municipal facilities. We are doing that um, and we're looking to continue to do that. Promote cars with higher MPG through local incentives. Once again, I, I put, is this feasible here? I mean, you're, I mean, is, are we at a... That's not electric. No, no. <laughs> I mean, is the town in a place, or frankly, are a lot of towns in a place where right. the local government can provide incentives for the vehicle you choose to buy? I just feel like it's, it's asking a lot from a community, and especially a cash-strapped community. Right, it would have to be, um, a very, which is my words, an extremely progressive community that be willing to. Essentially, it's an income redistribution program where you would yeah. tax the, the citizens to incentivize saving elsewhere. Right, and that's that usually a big sell. Well, not to mention it. I mean, <clears throat> this is going to sound like an odd way to phrase the question, but take all the environmental impacts away from buying the fuel efficient vehicle it doesn't necessarily benefit the resident it just benefits the town because you're going to bring in some tax and give a portion of that back to them for buying a car that you know that, i don't know it's just an odd it's an odd thing for like a local like a local municipal goal for me it's a hard one though so that's a non-feasible i put i put another is this feasible and these are i agree these are ones that i I think when we kind of review all these, these are ones we highlight and look at the select board and say, is this even feasible to you, right? Like we don't see some of these as feasible. Is it feasible for you or do you feel this is a, you know, this is one of those long shots that we sort of, you know, we hide the, the row on and sort of concentrate on the other one? I mean, these are big, when you're looking at this kind of stuff, you're looking mm -hmm. at making a big environmental right. impact, and that right. requires a macro approach, not a little town by town. Right. I don't, you know. Isn't there a, a legislator, um, Senator Markey, that's moving? He hasn't fleshed out his plan yet, but the aspirational to Green New Deal. deal. And, yeah. Yeah. That uh, I don't know the details of it, but. A read them. What's that? I just said you should read them. The, some of the New Deal, I mean, it, the personal opinion, some of them are very far-fetched. Okay. I mean, some I think are in the realm of what we want to do, but in some are a hard sell, totally right? Totally not non-feasible or just... Yeah. I mean, inspirational is the term. Mm. Yeah. Like it, and it is there's a reason it wasn't supported, right, even by the, the Democrats, right, that... 
whatever resolution they had to support it. It was supported, by, I think, by zero representatives. Okay. okay. I don't know the details. I just heard yeah. of it. Okay. I mean, I think it's good, but we, we, we're we not at a place where, you know, residents start reusing their wastewater for drinking water or other purposes and a, you know, home by home level. Like, it's just not. Those are like 20 years out. We're right just things. to we Southampton and we the United States of America are well, I mean, far away from that. That's what astronauts do, right? They have to reuse yeah. the the liquid that comes out of their body. But I think selling it to a <laughs> general population that no, this is what you need to do going so forward so. is it's that's very difficult. But certainly, gray water could be used for Not stuff um, out of your body. But yeah. gray water is a yeah. very different thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. For, for well, that's what the, some of those topics are in the the New Deal. But you know, recycling urine is in there for other household uses. Not, sorry, this, but the gray water is a, yeah. The gray water is a great. It's a great thing. A lot of town. A lot of. The colleges and universities do that. They mm -hmm. yeah. recycle that. It's just different than what we're used to. That's why everyone's supposed to do it. Basic right. biogas digesters as well. I, mean. I think it's <laughs> it's just we're debating strategy really, but it's, if it's aspirational, it's like you push it. It's like a negotiation. You push it way out here, and you'll accept here. Yeah, mm -hmm. could be. Anyway, sorry. How about the efficient vehicle policy for the town fleet? That seems like it could be feasible only because it says model policies from other towns that are readily available. So that is part of the, that was also part of the Green Communities Act, um, the town fleet, okay. excluding heavy equipment and emergency uh -huh. vehicles. I see, okay. Um, so you're, I mean, we probably only have three town vehicles that would fall under that. <laughs> Maybe. Actually, no, because Randall's truck's probably a Super Duty with yeah, a plow on it, so that one makes sense. Pickup we have are three F-350, two F-350s, and a 3500. We may not have any vehicles that actually <laughs> qualify for that policy. Well, the, cru uh, the cruisers, right? Well, those will have different motors, though. Motors. So those are going to have... I want the fire chiefs. That's, that's probably the only vehicle I can think of. <laughs> um, we have no half tons. Yeah, his is the only... The only thing close. Okay, the building really? inspector doesn't have anything. Yeah. Yeah. No. 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 I mean, I know it's a requirement for the Green Communities Act. I don't. What about the uh, van that the um, COA uses? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's, that's isn't that leased from? I think it yeah. is leased yeah. from Frita. 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 Yeah. So those are. I mean, those. I don't know if that one is in particular, but some of their vehicles have been like sort of dual fuel yeah. or they have some yeah. propane aspect to them. So I don't know if that van is itself, but probably not. Um, it'd probably be the next step for them. I know they're doing like the bigger buses. As you see them, they have billboards on them. Yes. Promoting it when they drive by. Uh, buses, yeah. Either the PD, TA, or. Right. <laughs> Raise awareness of alternative transportation service options such as car shares, NU rides, and PBTA, paratransit with town resources. For a rural community, that doesn't sound it is useful. Yeah, I mean, I think. So when we talk about the council on aging and the PBTA and the car shares and stuff, I think. Maybe there's sort of populations or age groups that it's applicable to, and maybe those networks kind of work that out um, or try to find solutions to that. I don't know. Well, admittedly, I don't know anything <laughs> about the car shares or the new rides. No, I don't know what that is. Yeah. I mean, I know they used to have um, what's it, zip cars mm -hmm. hometown yeah. town where you can rent the car. Um, so that would be under the classification of new rides, is that what you're thinking? Maybe car share? Or car share. Probably a car share. I don't a know. company like 10 years ago or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Didn't make new it. rides. <laughs> no. But 
I think the point is raise awareness. Right. So if you're uh, working in downtown Springfield and you discover, oh my gosh, you would live in Southampton mm -hmm. too. Is there a chance that we could share rides a few days a week? Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. that is the point. You know, just to raise maximize that. Yeah, right, right. Um, or Hartford or something. Although I have a son who works in West Hartford and he just wants to go and come back. Well, and, then, right. Right. and there's right. also, you know, mm. You're in that half part of town, and I'm here. That's and right. So or, you know, I got to leave early today because I have a dentist appointment, or my kid calls in sick, or something. You know. It takes work to yeah. ride share. It takes work. It to takes a lot work. of work to yeah. ride share. Mm -hmm. I've done it. Yeah. Sorry. Especially on the days that you, let's say, didn't work out. Like I think about that because I work with a couple of people that live in town, or live, or work with people that live here. And yeah. Like, what if they're sick? That's right, and it's their turn to drive. Yeah, or like the vice versa. I don't know. It's sometimes they gotta go in early because of a meeting. Right. Or, right, or so stay I late. Know, I know a new rides is hmm. what bankrupt. <laughs> <laughs> it's a program through the Commonwealth, actually. Oh. And it's all about trying to eliminate single user cars, so whether it's walking, biking, carpooling, anything. There's a program where you track your trip and like all the trips you take in this you know, non-single car fashion generates points that can be redeemed at local restaurants. <laughs> oh, is that right? Like that. See a movie on so. It's now called Bay State Commute. Right. Oh, Bay State Commute. So do you just need someone else in the vehicle with you? Right. My yeah. wife and our son right. places right. all the time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> He's giving you discounts for dinner. Uh, uh, did, uh, wait, did you say, did you say something about a blow-up doll in the, in the car with you? No. <laughs> Actually, I know people who've done that on the car, Har Hartford commute. I know. Yeah, I yeah. 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 Yes. See what those in DC do? They do in DC too. Mm -hmm. But that's to the point that a lot of this is going to be economically driven. Yeah. Gas goes back up to four yes, dollars right. a gallon. Yeah. Yeah. People get people are willing to do the work. Yeah. yeah. To That's coordinate exactly right. and, um. mm -hmm. Now called based in commute. Very cool. Yeah. Well based. we could do something we, to achieve this goal. We could just, you know, like have a brochure yeah. downstairs in the town hall that says, Have you heard of this? And, right. You know, what do you do to to get it going for yourself? And that's it. We raised well, awareness. You might even have one downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> because a lot of those state agencies send those right. brochures that's out. That's true. Um, so when we're walking out tonight, can we look and see if there's a brochure? But to yeah. what end? I mean, brochure could be absolutely fruitless yeah. if you don't find it or look for it. You're absolutely no, right. No, but even producing you get results. It, even, yeah, it's for that's right. Producing you can raise awareness, but if it has no effect. Yeah. Then Right. So you know, I, was, I, I, yeah, I, I guess you yeah, they, you're supposed to download the app and track your trip. Or how, how, do they, how would it even know if it's <laughs> someone else in the car? Or I think if you if you system. want to commute to where you work, if you live in if you live in Northampton and you want to commute to Amherst, I'm just going to pick two like not sort too of far away, two denser places, not too far away. If you wanted to commute every day with someone. You could find them, right? There's resources. Oh, yeah. There's online apps. There's different things where you could find someone to ride share to a right. new ride, sure. you know, Mass Bay ride share. You, you could find them. I, I think. It's the one. I think yeah. there's got to be, you know, the equivalent of a Craigslist or an online bulletin yeah, board or right. something that, if there isn't, someone should make it because. Yeah. And again, how much traffic that site would get really depends on. Economics, I think, yeah. in yeah. the end. Yeah. But two people I work with commute together. Um, like one was an intern, the other one is a you know, full time employee. They commuted together. The intern just went back to school. So, um, But they would ride in and out together every day. Mm -hmm. They live maybe Florence area. Somewhere. Well, then there's other, in other bigger cities, there's looser programs too. I mean, in right. DC there were places where people would line up and if, if you were working in DC but you were living in Springfield, Virginia for example, mm -hmm. there'd be everybody that was heading in that general direction. They just There's a meeting point where the people had to line up 
and I'm driving along and I only have, I'm only have me in my car and I'm not going to be in the HOV lanes. I'm going to stop and pick up that person. I don't know him from Adam. Really? And maybe the only day that I ever meet them, take them, and we drive home together. That's a little too yeah, right. So you can get in the HOV yeah. lane. Yeah, absolutely. It's like hitchhiking. It might be a little yes. risk in that, but yeah, you I'm took it. Yes. <laughs> but it, yeah, it's a pretty common. That's a great idea. So I think it's what Jim says. It's economically mm -hmm. driven. Driving into a big city like DC yep. Yep. is a little different than driving to Amherst. Sure. No, absolutely. Or right. driving to Springfield yep. even. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah. Because yep. I used to when I, I worked in Springfield for years and years and years, and. You know, we, if I needed to figure it out with someone, mm -hmm. I would. I'd find them. I mean, that's not sure. DC. Yeah. It's not yeah. No, but it's, it's the whole HOV lane concept. You know, it's right. it, you had to yeah. really, you know, do that. You know, at certain hours, you just would never get home if you didn't have somebody in that car to go on the HOV lane. So, yeah. so that's a different economics, yeah. which is time, but it's exactly. the same right. mode. Mm -hmm. right. Yep. So there's your next, one of your next many yeah. jobs. You can set this uh, <laughs> billboard up and you could get a dollar for every time they checked it or something. Add that to my list. Okay, Complete Streets. What? Adopt a Complete Streets policy to provide space for alternative forms of transportation such as biking, walking, mm -hmm. and inter and intra town mass transit in the town's village center. <laughs> well, I think we had talked about that in a previous chapter. We did. We did. So it really comes to putting in when you redo roads and right, and that's right. that's something yeah. the state does automatically. Um, they don't they don't do a road widening project without putting in a bike lane. Now, I mean, you need it's all required. Yeah, local local government can push back to a certain extent, but I think they. They'll pull back funding if there isn't some sort of complete streets aspect. So, so here's a question. We know we have a very big project going on in town. It just started. There's a big sign right in front of my house that says road construction ahead, mm -hmm. and that's the end of Glendale going um, down to Route 10. Right. Um, is that going to be a complete street project because it's being done in 2019? Is, is that the assumption that that'll have a biking lane and, I think it and will. a sidewalk. And a sidewalk. sidewalk. It, will have, it will have a sidewalk. So I wonder if, it, if the density of the how it moves around, because the other part of Glendale was done not that long ago. That's correct. Well, it years. was several years ago now, believe it or not. Well, even if it was 10 years ago, yeah. that, that was too long. That was too long? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's probably been 10 years. So it has been, I think. I guess. Where does the time go? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm not getting any older. So, okay, so we assume that it's being done automatically um, depending on when the improvements are done. Mm -hmm. Wait, did we say in this meeting that? The size of the sidewalk that was put in in Route 10 just to, was it this meeting that mm -hmm. it went from two. being this wide to mm -hmm. being super wide because two of two wheelchairs. The wheelchairs, yeah. Yep. 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 Great. I mean, good. <laughs> I was in a wheelchair, I wanted. <laughs> It's but good. it does look. Winter races. I thought they were building another lane in there. Was, was this <laughs> no, the fast lane? Well, that's like, you know, that's, that's what I said last time. One of the, uh, right. you can, the highway trucks just pulled up onto it. Yeah, that was just, it's an easy way to clear it, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, another quick question about this, just while we're at it, and I know we're going back to another chapter, but I happen to have walked from this building to my home, which isn't really that far, but not too long ago. The sidewalk is there, but in deplorable shape. Whose responsibility? Is that a state responsibility? Um, Going up Route 10 towards, guess it was towards the post office. It'd be the state highway, right? So yeah. yeah. The, the old front. sidewalk? The Going old sidewalk. Up by the fire station? Up yes, the going right by the yeah. cemetery, yes. I feel like yeah, so that sidewalk's needed some yeah, refurbishing work. for a yeah. while. Well, there isn't even a sidewalk along the um, cemetery. Right, right, right. And but there isn't. It goes up there is in the cemetery. Yeah, but, but that's, the cemetery. Cemetery. That's, that's the cemetery. That's the cemetery. That's not always cleared either. In the winter, right? it's not cleared. Yes. Oh, yeah, well, I now, can you get taking some <laughs> notes out there for work, and I went to go walk in the cemetery, and I'm like, oh, the path is steep. So mm -hmm. dumb. What I have just coincidentally noticed today, coming to town hall earlier, is that um, there's on the um, on this the town side of Pine Meadow, 
there is a sidewalk T put in. Yes. So it, there's a ramp, and as though it's going to be extended in both directions, down Pomeroy and down the highway. Yeah. So they, the state also does that on projects. So there are. It's probably required, right? Yeah. So I've been involved with some bridge projects where they have sidewalks over the bridge. And that's it. That end. 20 feet after well, the bridge. Right down at Sheldon's, right down, it's the same thing. There's a yeah. sidewalk on that bridge, but there's no, nothing on it. It's like just a to say, we've done this much, mm -hmm. and I don't We're need another project future. to connect it, I yeah. see. But it also stakes the claim on the new bridge, right? Because mm -hmm. you're not going to touch that bridge for four years. Mm -hmm. right? So then if you build a sidewalk on either end to a bridge with no sidewalk, it's, it's worse mm -hmm. off, right? I think the bridge on College Highway not far from, was it Riverdale or just past Glendale as you're heading toward Big Y? Yeah. Same thing. It's a sidewalk to nowhere. That's right. Yeah. But that bridge, for the same as you're saying. Yep. Okay. Well, that's what we said last time. There'll eventually be a sidewalk to Big Y. Eventually. Yeah. About five, ten years old. Eight foot wide sidewalk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Promote alternative fuel stations in town, such as plug-in electric chargers and biofuel stations. Been here before. Huh? Talked about that already. Yeah. Yeah. Promote biking, install bike lanes when feasible, install bike racks at public buildings. I mean, this is, it's a repeat, and it's mm -hmm. probably close to being done. Right. I I think so do we have a bike rack? Do we have bike yeah. racks? I, I was just about to say. Do we have a, is there one? There's yeah. a railing you can. <laughs> like I feel like I used to always see bike racks everywhere, but I feel like over the past five, ten years they've really like gone down. Like I don't see. So there's there's anymore. definitely one out here. There's one in the library. At the Norris library. has one. Yeah, and Norris mm -hmm. definitely has one. This is relatively new. It's a beautiful one. That says one. Norris. Yeah, it's right. painted yeah. different yeah. colors. Yeah. So. Yeah, but you really only see the blue letters. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, so it's being done and. As we get better sidewalks, I mean, Hopefully kids can ride their bikes and adults can ride their bikes too. Just bike lane before. Yeah, not on the sidewalks. Oh, yeah, you get tickets. Uh oh. No criminal ticket. Uh oh. Don't tell mine. But if there's no I want bike to ride lane. with my kids. Yeah. yeah. They're not supposed to ride on the sidewalk? Uh, no. Oh, no. Uh, no, we do it. No one's going to enforce that. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm not sending my, well, he's not that young now, but when he was five, I'm not putting him in the street. Mm -hmm. no. Yeah, the streets are so dangerous. That's That's right. Right. I would bike to work, and it's still dark out on Pomeroy. I'd jump up on that sidewalk. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, no I way. think even if there were bike lanes, most parents would probably tell their kids to ride your bike on the sidewalk. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't ride your bike in the street. Uh, let's see, next, apply for green community designation complete. Mm -hmm. Apply for solarized mass estate program to increase the number of solar PV electric generating installations by lowering costs to residents and businesses. <laughs> that one has nothing's been done with that one, to my knowledge. Um, it's something other towns are doing in the state. Uh, apply for green community competitive grants. So I think this is ongoing, right? So we received a disbursement last year. And you have to, you know, wait a year to apply for more grants. So I think this would be the year that they would apply for more green communities. If it's still on a yearly basis, it could be every other year at this point. 2018 was the last year, is that yeah. true? Yeah, we got funding with designation. Okay. <coughs> and what was it for again? It went for... Um, Energy efficiency initiatives in this building. So they did, I think, air sealing. There was other things. If you look it up, Southampton Green Community Designation, we'll talk about what we got all the funds for. I think it could provided. have included the light changes in It might have. I, I don't it remember. Mm -hmm. I read it when we were sitting back there. I just can't remember what, that, what it was. And that concludes seven. I almost installed those in my home. Kids never turn off the lights, right? Mm -hmm. you leave the room, they go off on themselves. Doc, that's expensive. Yeah. You can make them now. Yeah. Our thermostat has one, which I don't use because we have a dog and cats, and the heat will just run all the time. I'm kind of guessing <laughs> it's running right. in front of it. But yeah. If you walk in front of it, it'll turn on, and you know, you can make it so it 
adjust the temperature of the room to start moving. <laughs> So dad would take all my pleasure away yelling at my kids to turn the light off, you know, so what to do as a dad right? tell them to turn the light. So, and they would never learn. Can I bring up something that are related to this chapter that yeah. Francine emailed me to share with you? Um, can find it. Here it is. Uh, Francine did some research related to this chapter. As of December 2018, the following were average annual heating costs in Massachusetts by source. Average for what? The town or per house? I'm going to assume per house. Oil is $1,642. Natural gas, $983. Electric, $4,511. Propane, $2,118. Uh, she requested a five-year look back to get the cost to heat slash air condition all municipal buildings. I've not yet received a response, but we are tracking to spend approximately 27000 for this town hall fiscal year 2019. Also, according to the town's five-year capital plan, solar installation, oh, here it is, behind the fire department, for municipal purposes is not planned until 2023 or 2024 and for $185,000. This is far too late as far as I'm concerned and the sooner we make an investment in alternate, alter, alternate energy, the more money the town will save as well as benefit to our environment. We are currently spending approximately $27,000 $27, per year for town hall utilities. Um, so she's proposing that the town explore a larger alternate energy installation to offset the cost of electricity for all town residents, like many other towns have done already. So she had done some work on this. So I'm just going to build these facts into the minutes. Um, Can you say the, um, the average household? Heating cost again? Oh, she's got it. The heating, with its oil is yep. sixteen forty-two. Is that I something? definitely don't pay sixteen forty-two a year to heat my oil. Well, this is average in yeah. mass, but um, Mike, I don't know. You maybe don't have a McMansion, but some <laughs> Massachusetts. Yeah. Oh, this is not for the town. This is just state. Massachusetts. Data. Yes. Okay. Well, I think that's possible. Maybe a year. And also, think. if you have an old, like old every time house, I, I think my pay more. Oh, yeah. not sure. Yeah, oh, you're paying more. Yeah. Holy cow! I was thinking pay more. Fifty. Natural what gas, nine eighty-three. Yeah. So, yeah, it is. It's an expensive. Still one of the cheaper ways to go. Yeah. And, and the electricity is forty-five hundred. Um, propane, twenty-one hundred. I'm lucky enough to have gas. We fill up. Fill up. The tank a couple times. Mm -hmm. Remember when oil yeah, was like four bucks? Was awful. <laughs> Probably not. Five tanks? Far. Full tanks? No. Or like oh, partial fills? Probably like three quarter tanks. Yeah. I don't want to get too low. I'd probably pay something like the season, 1600, something like that. That's for a year or a season? That's what it says. Man, average well, Massachusetts yeah. per year. Was that heating or just? Um, it just said the utility. Okay. It didn't say heating. It might be other stuff too, like running your dryer. Well, not right. oil, but yeah, the other hot way. water. Oil would be just heat, I think. Yeah, I would assume so. Oil would be. <coughs> yeah, I'd probably pay about that. We turned. We we linked into the natural gas because it went. To, and not all of Southampton has natural gas. It yeah, stops so at our in front of my house. So it's in front of my house. Fast enough for that. So it was in a moratorium. It's the day we moved in. Oh. And you got it or you didn't? No, we don't. Oh, you didn't get it's it? It's out in the street, though. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, frustrating. So we had to update our oil boiler to a oh, new oil boiler. I see. <laughs> when we would have paid to put a gas to you. But I'm so impressed by these updated boilers of any kind, whether it's a home boiler. We went to a sugar shack up in West Hampton the other day, and they put in a new, and this is Steve's, I don't know if you've heard of it, they put in a new, uh, with a state grant, a new fire burned, um, what's the word? Evaporator. Evaporator. I watched, they only put three logs in in two hours because yeah. it's so tight. It's amazing. That's amazing. It's they're, absolutely amazing. Yeah, they're starting to build like high efficient like wood or like wood product burners. Mm -hmm. I know there's, 
I don't know if George Propane's getting involved, but they're doing these other like different types of pellet. Yeah. Pelletized stoves that are like mm -hmm. super efficient and that's right. And they also work wonderful. natural yeah. gas as well can be super efficient. Yeah. And the American Lung Association um, mm -hmm. won a lawsuit against um, wood old wood burning stoves that were not energy efficient and said they were. And it, they put the they turned around the, the million dollar um, award to um, people that would destroy their old not energy efficient. Um, wood burning stoves, ours, and um, we got $2,500 out of that deal in order to buy. Um, That's a brand new stove. A brand, well, all the other costs were additional, like the liner and the chimney and yeah. stuff like that, but it was quite a deal. But you have to meet all these criteria. You have to have the right stove and all that stuff. And the second interesting part of the criteria is you have to destroy, or not, we didn't, but the company that removed it had to prove that the stove was totally destroyed. What they didn't want was somebody to go to a landfill and go, oh, a wood stove, you know, and then put it back in right. to use. So it had to be completely destroyed. Would they allow you to purchase a new, like, wood burning stove with, like, a catalytic? Converter. I don't know the answer to that because I don't think so. From what we learned, it was pellet and natural gas. What is the cost? What is the energy cost and the pollution cost to producing pellets? I, I don't know. I do not know the answer. What, to that. What's the footprint to producing pellets? Question. Yeah. Oh. Pellets is just mostly compressed wood byproducts. Yeah, but there's energy that's involved in whatever, in the making oh, right, right. Uh, of those pellets. I, I don't know. I have no idea. But there, is it there is some cost right, right. to the manufacture and transport of pellets right. that probably is not being taken into account. Yeah. And then I'm sure there's a study somewhere. Mm -hmm. I just received a, a magazine that I get every week, uh, and they were talking about the cost of um, recycling and how that is totally shifted. It used to be, Ed said it in the select board meeting, it used to be the town got money mm -hmm. for recycling, and now we're going to be paying higher. Sure. Yeah. than just doing our regular Well, trash. but now we can't just ship it over, whatever. China, 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 China. they don't take yeah. it anymore. Yeah. So it's they do the market for that, plus yeah. the drop in oil prices. Yeah. So we need to be collapsed. Yeah. So yeah. Looking, looking at, you said Francine said we're on track to spend what? 27000 For this $27,000 for, <clears throat> for town hall for fiscal year 2019. For electric? She didn't well, say. She gas. just said oh, it's all gas. cost to yeah. heat slash air condition all municipal buildings. Wait a minute, sorry. She, I requested a five year look back to get the cost to heat air condition all municipal buildings. Next sentence. I have not yet received a response, but we are tracking to spend approximately 27000 for this building in 2019. Okay. If you come in this building. They said electric, because going by the old. Uh, fiscal year 2011 chart that they have in here. I was going by the electric. We'd be spending way more now than we were. And I was like, that can't be right. But taking into account gas, too. I forgot to gas. There aren't the best controls in this building, either. Like, I know a year ago, <laughs> when I was on the finance committee, you'd come up here sometimes, and it would be like 68 degrees in here in the middle of summer with the air conditioning going in. You know, we have a meeting of five people, and we don't need it 68 degrees, nor does anybody want it 68 no, degrees. Right. Mm -hmm. They're wearing um, sweaters, right? Yeah. yeah, or you'd come up here, and it'd be like 78 in the winter. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the, the control of the way... Has know, that been changed? Used. Well, haven't they done some work on that? I don't know. I know they had worked on on units, but I don't know. It doesn't it's feel 78 that. in here right now. Yeah. No, yeah. It's very good. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So... Um, so that is Chapter 7. How do we yeah. feel about Chapter 8? I, 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 I didn't read my yeah. yeah, We thought Chapter 7 was going to be short and easy, but... Uh, <laughs> we well, we do tend to get diverted. <laughs> we will... Um, I, it's good. So we are meeting next Monday. Yes. And uh, maybe we need to be extremely efficient about Chapter 8, which is the last chapter. So I think we have better discussions doing it the way we just did, but I think we get more done doing it the way that Mike <laughs> we did. We did both tonight, um, George. We did That's both. That's true. So why don't, you know, we do both. Combo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm good with that. I mean, I think, I think it's a good idea. Chapter 8, I have a lot of pending actions. Mm -hmm. So... Reviewing the chapter is good. I don't know if we're really going to get anywhere with the strategies. Yeah. We have two complete, and the rest are pending action. So 
already. <laughs> um, you know, there may not be a lot of discussion around the strategies other than what is difficult, what is not difficult, but. So, I move to adjourn, Second. but I can see Christina really needs to stay for hours. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.